I was sitting in Oxford, uh, in one of the colleges in Oxford, with Dr. Renan Baker. Dr. Renan Baker. Renan, hi. Um, wow, where to start with your story? You just literally got back from Tel Aviv last week, uh, trying to sort out your uh, father's inheritance. Let's start there. Um, what happened to you last weekend in uh, Tel Aviv? Um, in Tel Aviv, I saw that in Israel, uh, men are still victimized um, and can fall into the same thing that happens to them during a divorce. Um, my mother, who was divorced, who divorced my father, decided to start a hot pursuit against me because she didn't like me coming to my father, my late father's flat, which has nothing to do with. Um, she filed, she filed a false complaint against me um, in order to try and get the leverage. Um, the same as she did when she filed a false complaint against my father 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, but this time I was lucky that I was able to get into Zvi and Yuval, uh, the lawyers, Yaniv, sorry. Um, and they were able to explode her complaint and show that she was completely lying and she was basically filing false complaints against me. Let's just cover this first then because um, you know people are learning through these videos that false complaints are very easy to do in Israel. Now your mother is on disability, uh, you have no relationship with your mother and from what I understand she really played some games with your father who was a very professional man and had him put in an institution many many years ago um, and your family seemed to think they can do it all the time. Um, she claimed that you tripped her up and pushed her on the street as uh, her, your brother and the cops were running after you, is that right? It's almost yeah. too funny to think about. Yeah, really. this is right, and she was interviewed over a phone speaker afterwards, after I ran for about 20 minutes in the streets of Tel Aviv with three cops running after me. Um, I burst into Yaniv and Svi, the lawyers, uh, Yaniv Moyal and Svi there into their office, and they were able to interview my mother and she admitted that she was basically filing false complaints against me after they questioned her in the presence of the cops. Had you not been in the lawyers, where do you think you would be now? Um, I suppose that they would have ended up arrested for at least 24 hours uh, with a non-exit order. With a no-exit order. Now you're British, let's just clarify this, you were born in Israel but you were naturalized as a British citizen within days of being born, so it's not as if you escaped Israel and you're not British, you're British, full British. Yeah, I'm registered, not naturalized. Sorry, registered at birth as being British. Um, so now we take on a generation and we get to your situation. You married an Israeli. Uh, wow. <laughs> My commiserations to you first and foremost. Um, I understand that your Israeli ex-wife now um, preferred women to men and that you were one of the few, if only, men she'd ever been with. Would that be about right to surmise? Um, I think that yes. Um, I married my wife that I met during my master's degree in Israel. Uh, we had to get married after 18 months because she wanted a spouse visa to the UK. Um, and after a few months after we got married, I found out that she had um, an account you know, a lesbian dating site called She Date. Um, and until me, at the age of 24, 25, she didn't have any serious relationship with a man. She only had two ex-girlfriends. Um, okay. And she came from a culture that at the age of 24, she said that if it wasn't me, she would have gone for sperm donation or joint parenthood by getting pregnant from a gay man. You didn't know this at the time? Um, not really. I tried not to notice it. Because you fell in love, yeah, and yes, yes you men do that. Um, now, at the moment, you're divorced from your ex-wife. Um, I understand she's trying to play the system completely now by importing Israeli false claims to the UK. Um, let's just take the one where she's accused you of being a dangerous man, which we know in Israel is the mantra of women in divorce. How is she trying to do it in England? Um... Apparently in England, she took advantage of the situation that I've only submitted my BPhil, which is a doctorate to take about four and a half years. She left the house, took the child away, didn't let me see the child for one month. Uh, but apparently in the UK, women go to jail if they put false complaints against their partners. So instead of putting false complaints against me, she took advantage of my financial situation, a recent graduate Oxford student, um, and started filing things to court telling people in the local synagogue that I drew a knife on her, that I'm dangerous to the child. Her lawyer, who is an Israeli, his name is Ranan Berlad, 
wrote to me to say that they have medical evidence that I'm insane and, and insane, and this supports the um, um, how how did he put it? Um, it supports his client's concern that I am a danger to your L and her. Um, but I've asked my GP. There's nothing on my medical record. In fact, I have three psychiatric assessments by NHS doctors, psychiatrists, who say that I'm completely sane, and I'm completely normal, and that I'm not a danger to anyone, including my wife and daughter. Now, she couldn't make that claim to the police in England, could she? No, she couldn't, because up until this day, 13 months afterwards, she never filed a C-101 form for domestic abuse, which should have said that I'm not allowed anywhere near a child because she needed to back it up by statement to the court um, and by police complaint. The only thing that she ever filed to a court in the UK is asking me for more money because all her purpose is to break me financially, as she herself said. She either wanted me to commit suicide, get locked up in a mental hospital, or give in to her father's suggestion that they will give me money or I will just tell her to leave me alone and I will give up on my parental rights. I've heard that before <laughs> um, from women um, who say, we're going to drive you crazy, get you to kill yourself, get you locked up. Um, <clears throat> I never thought I'd hear it again, but I am hearing it over and over. So we have a benefit then that in Israel, um, women can make false claims and it's good enough to put you in jail it's good enough to criminalise you and it's good enough to you to lose your children. She hasn't been able to do that in the UK due to the laws here, so she can't actually do that, but she has alienated you from your daughter, hasn't she? Yes. Um, and on the grounds that you're dangerous and just literally stopped letting you see her. Yes, and I basically had no ability to, to pay for a lawyer or do anything because I've just finished my degree course. And now she's after your inheritance, as I understand. Yes. Apparently, Israeli practices are well enough as long as you can use them. Once you can use the British system, you start claiming things that you can do on the British system. Um, so now she files in for half of my father's inheritance. In Britain, which in she Britain, may have a claim for. She may have a claim for, even though in, in English law it's a short-term marriage. Okay. Um, but she also asks for my future pension. And she basically doesn't want to financially disconnect from me. She wants to, like, bind herself to me financially, even though she basically ruined my academic career with what she did 12 months ago. And here's the rub. She hasn't asked for one pound in child support. Yes, because in the UK... Nothing. Apparently, in the UK, if I pay child support, she has to let me see the child. So the only thing she is, she's after the money and alienating me from my daughter. So you're a victim of um, Israeli mentality, uh, trying to import Israeli laws into Britain. Some great benefits in Britain are that we do have slightly fairer, fairer system. I think there may be some men who disagree here, but they've never been to Israel, have they? Yeah. Um, you're, you've lived bo in both countries, um, what's, and you've just come back from Israel. What's your view right now of what's going on in Israel for the, for the guys there? Um, I think that in Israel... Um, is just a jungle. Um, life of Jewish men are very cheap. They say that life, living in Israel is expensive, but life of men are very cheap. It's fine that men commit suicide. It's okay to lock men on false complaints. It's fine to use the same methods that someone used in order to extract better financial arrangement as my mother did with my father with false complaints to do the same during an inheritance. And it's the same thing. And I know that if I were in Israel, I would have been ended up locked up in an asylum as my ex-wife's brother, who's a psychiatrist, tried to do here. Isn't the same as Israel, psychiatric assessments here. Uh, you get to keep your own assessment. Oh, they one. send you a copy. You get the, your CC'd, your GP's CC'd. I mean, everyone in, everyone in his dog can see a psychiatric assessment. Yes, I, because I, as a patient, I'm allowed to see anything that's on the NHS record. Yeah, you're not allowed to see the same stuff so easily in Israel when you I have a I can even ask for my daughter's records. So this is based on the fact that she decided to say, oh, uh, he's a dangerous man. Yep. Um, which is the first word that see. comes out of women uh, in bitter divorces in Israel is, he's dangerous. Uh, there's a lawyer, Tally Gottlieb, who gave me an interview who said that she, heard, she hears the word danger 
more time in divorce than she does in criminal cases, which she's a criminal lawyer. Okay, this is dated 7th November. Um, this is from 2014, yeah? Yeah, because that's the week that she left and said that I'm dangerous. That's when everything started. Um, it's basically, it's a long report. Um, is there a bottom line to it? Uh, yes. There usually, um, usually is a bottom line, yeah. Mental state examination. Appro appropriately dressed, engaged and cooperative, good eye, good eye contact may describe mood as 6 out of 10, 10 normal mood, anxiety 4 to 5 out of 10. 10 is high anxiety considering the situation. Mood, uh, low mood, in the week in the week following the split, now no thoughts or plans or intentions of suicide? To commit suicide, deny thoughts, plans, intentions of harming anyone, including his wife. No evidence of psychotic phenomena. Good insight into the problems, including anger problem. Risk assessment, risks to self and others, low. There's no such thing as no risk, because anyone can drive a car. Well, of course. How uh, much did you pay for it? Nothing. Oh, it was free. It was signed by Dr. Mira Arun, a staff grade psychiatrist, um, who sent it to my GP, who referred me there. Um, and it, I was in the outpatients unit of the Oxford North East Oxon Adult Mental Health Team, which is the NEIL unit in the Warren Third Hospital. And they have an, they have an outpatients unit. Now, these people are not connected to what we, uh, the Israelis call the Revacha. They're not connected no, to the welfare. No, they're not connected to anything. They're, just, they're, they're just, just there. They're just there. If there's a crisis and someone needs to see a psychiatrist, you don't go, you're not being hospitalized for one day. They usually they tell you to wait for about two or three hours. Yeah. If it's an emergency. I, I, ha I, ha I was referred to by my GP. You wait for two or three hours, they sit and talk to you for about five or six hours, and then, like, they don't give, they, well, if they think you should be put in, they put you in. But if not, they would send you like a detailed five or six pages report within a week or two. So you were you and your GP. You weren't ordered to do this, were you? I mean, were you ordered by a court? Were you ordered? No, I just went to my GP. Right, because she said, he's dangerous. And, and you're insane. And so you voluntarily went off to your GP and said, what's she talking about? And here you have a psychiatric yep. report. So you see, this is like she approaches Professor Walton, who is my GP in Summertown Health Center. Um, and then they CC me because any report, I also had something about my psoriasis. In the UK, any report that a, an expert doctor writes, you can't approach an expert doctor without a reference from the GP. That's and true. both you and the GP get a copy of what's being written there and it's put in your general record. There's no like an industry of underground thing, private <laughs> private doctor, private psychiatrist, pay us anything. No, even, there even, even in my case, even my GP tried to approach the social services in Oxfordshire to say that there's no problem. But they basically don't know how to deal with what Shlomit is saying because they tell me, well, why would someone lie that you are dangerous? Well, this well, is the mystery, is that, you know, we've just spoken to an Israeli outside the room, yes. or, um, and you were telling him, and uh, he's not in Israel, so he doesn't buy this at all. Yep. Um, the fact that a man can be declared dangerous, declared criminal, lose his child, go to prison, contact centres, blah, 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 like that, a word. But it's not happening here quite so easy. She's given her word, you've proved it, but you still can't see... Yeah. Yes, because her lawyer, who is using Israeli practices, they claim that they have medical evidence to support her claim that I'm dangerous and insane. And what I have here is a medical record that says otherwise, and in any case, under UK law, they wouldn't have been able to access my medical file. Exactly. Um, but what they did was to just take advantage of my financial situation, that they couldn't afford anything, um, and just push the Israeli and create de facto situations which would alienate me from my daughter. But it's the same practices that you find in Israel. Child, just, child support in Israel for you would be around about six hundred pounds, I think. No, six, six, no, a bit under that. Four hundred pounds, I think you'd be expected to pay for your daughter. Um, what's the equivalent here? Because I know you said you looked it up on the child support page. Yeah, it finally it's twelve pounds a week. And yes, and in the UK, the same as you have a tax calculator online, you have child support calculator online. You put in your income and you put in your partner's income and it gives you a result for how much is reasonable for you to pay, and they do factor in how much your wife, pay, your ex-wife earns, and they calculate how much you earn. And if you go unemployed, 
you don't pay anything and she needs to claim it from the national insurance. And do you have all the days that uh, you can and can't see your child, you knock all those days off as well, yes. don't you? So you're talking because anywhere between... you that basically one of the factors that it asks you, how many times does the child sleep with you? Do you see your child? This is what you get from the online calculator. Uh, it says how much time the child is with you. In cases where you have sh complete shared parenting, I just played around with it, three days here, four days there, you hardly pay any child support because the child is most of the time with you. Now, in Israel, I understood the situation is even if the child is 90% of the time with the men, even he still needs he needs still needs to pay child support oh, to the yeah. wife. Yeah, he's, uh, I know plenty of men who are actually paying full child support to their exes, even though they have full custody. Yeah. Uh, but the, because she gave birth, it's a financial birthright to yeah. actually be paid for giving birth. Yeah. Uh, and you pay for that birth forever. And in Israel, what they do say when they speak about ISIS and everything, in Israel, um, it's still biblical law that governs child support. It is. And it's the same Bible that say that you should stone gay men. And it's the same one that says that you should kill all the foreign people out of the land of Israel. This is the same, this is the same document that they use in order to, to, to establish child support in Israel. Oh, so it's all, it's all still working in the modern day then, isn't it? Yes, and they speak about Iran with Sharia law. Basically, we uh, have halakha law in Israel. That is Sharia well, law. In, in, to us, to me, to, yeah. you know, we call halakha and Sharia almost the same. Yes, it's the same. And in, basically in Israel, they haven't heard about Western civilization. They're still in biblical times. Do you miss Israel? The weather. The weather. Um, I really, I regret that I came to visit and my first days were fine yeah. until I was reminded um, of what happens once a woman decides to chase you up. Even if it's your mother? Yes. Right. 